Which among the following is the most common recurrent fever syndrome in children? Very similar question was asked some years back in super speciality exam. So the options given are these. First thing that it's a one liner, it's a one liner, but I want to discuss some of the key points related to one of these topics. And that is why I have included all these entities. At least the name should be there. These are the common recurrent fever syndromes that we are talking about. What is the full form of these? Let us first write down the full form. Fafapa stands for persistent fever apthous stomatitis that is oral ulcers oral abscess ulcers pharyngitis pharyngitis is also sometimes mentioned in books as pharyngotonsillitis but nelson calls it as pharyngitis but you should understand that it is a exudative pharyngitis also involves tonsils very frequently and Adenitis. So, cervical lymphadenopathy or lymphadenitis is common. Second is FCAS. FCAS stands for familial cold autoinflammatory syndrome. It is precipitated by cold, so we call it as familial cold autoinflammatory syndrome. Then we have TRAPS. TRAPS stands for tumor necrosis factor. T stands for tumor necrosis factor. R stands for receptor, associated periodic syndrome and FMF you already know but still I will try it because I am discussing. So familial Mediterranean fever. All the four are recurrent fever syndromes but which is the most common in children? Surprise, surprise, it is not FMF. It is in children the most common is Pafapa. Nelson clearly mentions it, right? About Pafapa, I will discuss some key points that you can add to your notes. About other things, again, some points I, I would like to discuss. So, first is regarding FCAS. FCAS, please remember that uh, the onset of this condition, familial cold autoinflammatory syndrome, occurs before six months of age. So, it will happen in the infancy, early infancy. They, the each episode, each episode is triggered by exposure to cold. So, cold exposure they will be triggered and the duration of each episode will be less than 24 hours and it is also an autosomal dominant condition, right. Talking about traps, tumor necrosis factor receptor associated periodic syndrome, the onset of this syndrome will occur in the first decade of life. So, before 10 years of age, the onset will always happen and these are the patients, again it is considered to be an autosomal dominant condition. Familial Mediterranean fever, it is different from both of these two entities because it is considered to be a autosomal recessive condition and the onset occurs before 20 years of age according to Nelson as well as Harrison. So, what are we left with? Fafapa. These points I told you just as you know some added points which I found important for your exams. But Fafapa, the key points let us summarize. So, it's uh, the full form I have already discussed. Fafapa is the most common recurrent fever syndrome in children. Direct line taken from Nelson. Age of onset is 2 to 5 years. Then episodes last about 4 to 6 days. Uh, regardless of antibiotic or antibiotic treatment and often occur with clock like strict regularity with 3 to 6 week cycles. And as age advances, you will find that the frequency and intensity of the episodes will come down. Treatment of acute attacks, they are dramatically aborted by a single dose oral prednisolone as low as 0.5 mg per kg. You can go up to 2 mg per kg, single dose prednisolone. Within 24 hours to 36 hours, the attack will dramatically be aborted. But the key point to remember is prednisolone does not decrease the recurrence risk. It does not reduce the risk of recurrence in the patient. For recurrence, you will have to go in for cimetidine. In one third cases, it reduces recurrence. Colchicine and tonsillectomy have also been tried. They have been shown to reduce the recurrence risk. Although Nelson says that tonsillectomy is usually the last resort management. And uh, Anna Kinra, because there has been a, a role of probable involvement of interleukin 1 pathway, Anna Kinra has also been proposed to be effective in aborting the acute attack. But prednisolone single tablet costs about 2 rupees and anakinra is a monoclonal antibody and anakinra is a uh, biological therapy which is going to cost 
lakhs if not thousands and that is why uh, lakhs uh, i'm saying because we assume the child is be going to be admitted in a tertiary care center supportive therapy and then you are going to give it and uh, all these biologicals they do have their side effects also so if th the question says anakinra is it effective yes it is effective but if they ask is it given the answer is no prednisolone or steroid is good enough but recurrence risk cimetidine colchicine and last resort all sedectomy can be tried in these patients the good thing is pfapa tends to improve dramatically as age advances right so this dis finishes our discussion of the pediatric rheumatology and vasculitis hopefully it will benefit some of you <music>